Hello, everybody, and greetings from the Delta College Planetarium. My name is Brian, and today I'm going to guide you through identifying the autumn constellations visible from Bay City, Michigan. We're going to start our sky facing south at 10 p.m. on October 15. During the summer, we frequently used a special shape, the Summer Triangle, to find constellations. Conveniently, the fall also is a special shape to guide us through the sky, the Autumn Square. To find the Autumn Square, first locate the Summer Triangle. The Summer Triangle is just brighter, so it's easier to spot. Pick some spot near the middle of the triangle. The shapes we're dealing with are so large that we don't need to be very precise. From that spot, look to the east. If your back is to Polaris, this will be to your left. You'll come across a group of four stars that make a nearly perfect square. This is the Autumn Square. It's also called the Great Square of Pegasus because it's a major part of the constellation Pegasus. Pegasus is supposed to be a flying horse, but it's hard to see because it's upside down, and it's only the front half of the horse. The square makes the horse's body. This L shape coming off the lower right hand corner is the horse's head and neck. Two legs stretch out in front of the horse from the top right star in the square. Pegasus has a rider. Her name is Andromeda, and we can find her holding on to that top left star in the autumn square. There's a line of three relatively bright stars coming off that corner, and another line of three stars above. These are dimmer, but are in almost the same positions. Together, they make this big curving V-shape. This V-shape is the body of Andromeda. Her head is by Pegasus, and her feet are at the ends of the V. She has two arms stretched out to either side. There's a very important object visible in Andromeda. Follow the bright side of the V, the lower side, out two stars. Then jump to the dim companion star in the upper part of the V. Continue out about that same distance again. Under relatively dark skies, your eyes may notice a faint smudge in this part of the sky. It may be easier to see with averted vision by not looking directly at this spot. This smudge is the most distant thing you can see with your own eyes. It is the only thing you can see with your own eyes, which is not a part of the Milky Way galaxy. It is, in fact, its own galaxy. This is the Andromeda galaxy. The Andromeda galaxy is a huge spiral galaxy. We believe that the Milky Way looks something like the Andromeda galaxy, but Andromeda is larger, almost twice the size of the Milky Way. The Andromeda galaxy is very far away, about two and a half million light years. This means that the light that you see from this galaxy left it two and a half million years ago, making it easily the most distant thing you can see without a telescope. Near Andromeda's feet is the hero Perseus. Perseus and Pegasus are trying to save Andromeda from a sea monster. Perseus is a tricky constellation because it doesn't really look like anything. Some people say that Perseus looks like an umbrella, or maybe like the profile of a witch wearing a hat. To me, Perseus just kind of looks like a coherent line of stars with two branches coming off of it. Going back to Andromeda, below the V-shape that forms her body, near the feet, we can spot a small triangle of stars. This is Triangulum. The, uh, triangle. Alright, it's not the most creative constellation, but it is a real one. Continuing down, we reach a curve of four stars. Kind of looks like a straight line that curls downwards on the right. This is Aries, the ram. Returning to the autumn square, we've seen that the head and legs of Pegasus extend to the right of the square, and Andromeda extends from the upper left portion. So what about that lower left portion? Well, that corner is sort of surrounded by the constellation Pisces, the fish. Pisces is supposed to be two fish tied together. The constellation makes a big V shape that captures that corner of the autumn square. The fish are located at either ends of the V. The one on the right is formed by a circle of stars, while the fish on the left is more of a half circle under Andromeda. You want to avoid confusing the fish in Pisces with this circle of stars under Aries. Pisces is always going to frame Pegasus. The circle, on the other hand, is the tail of Cetus, the sea monster, coming to devour Andromeda. Though dim, I think Cetus looks very much like a whale. 
The circle at the end is the whale's tail, and the body is connected below in this shape resembling a trapezoid. Underneath Pegasus's head are two final constellations. The first is Aquarius, the water bearer. I generally think of Aquarius as essentially being shaped like the letter T, even though the stick figure is far more complicated. There's a line of stars on top, and then a line descending. This descending line looks unique though, because it's composed of a lot of stars. It has the effect of looking like a cascade of water. To Aquarius's right, heading towards the teapot of Sagittarius, is Capricornus, the sea goat. While Capricornus is dim, it has a distinctive shape. It looks like a crescent moon. As long as I'm someplace dark, it's usually pretty easy to find that crescent shape. And there you have it, the constellations of the fall sky as seen from Bay City, Michigan. Fall is a good time to go out stargazing because the days are starting to end earlier, the temperatures are still comfortable, and you can see a wide swath of the night sky over the course of a single night. So if you get a chance to spend an evening outdoors this autumn, try to walk through these fall constellations. This is Brian from the Delta College Planetarium wishing you clear skies.